Hey guys, welcome back. This is FullForMKJ.com. So we're gonna take a look at the Google Pixel XL. We know we are more than a bit late on the review on this guy, so we are just going to take a very brief perspective and get straight to the point. But before you do that, please do know that there are one issue after another, like Bluetooth, speaker, and camera. And today's review is going to be based on the assumption that your device doesn't come with any of this problem because mine did not. Let's start with the design where there is no doubt that this is indeed a big phone. It also is a tad thicker than most of the competitors and the bezels also are a bit thicker than the usual. But the grip is really nice and it feels very solid on hand. So if you're a fan of those kind of feeling, then you will probably like the Pixel XL. My personal few complaints include the location of the earphone jack. I like them better on the bottom and the speaker on the bottom is very easily blocked by your hand. And I believe that a phone with this size should have stereo speaker, which it clearly does not. And it only comes with IP53 rating, so if you need more protection than that, you're out of luck. The big fingerprint reader on the back is very fast and accurate, and it also comes with a gesture where you can pull down your notification bar in two steps, and it even rotates following the orientation of your phone. The QHD AMOLED display also is a pleasure to look at. It's even got a hidden sRGB mode if you like that better. And the touchscreen on top of that with Gorilla Glass 4 is also very responsive and feels just great. What runs the whole phone by the time that we're shooting this video is Android 7.1.2 Nougat. It of course has all the Nougat goodies like split screen, Google Assistant with the button, or quick multitasking all there. And the overall experience and performance is just simply too good. You just tap on a button and without any hesitation, it just launches apps without any lag. It is very well optimized and you'll probably like the experience a lot. The pure Android experience now has all the necessary features like a reboot button that has been missing for a very long time or kill all button that is hidden right there on top. Moving on to the camera department where you can quickly launch the camera with double press up button. I have to say that this is one amazing camera. Both daylight photos and the low lighted indoors photos will give satisfactory images, whichever environment and just however you take the photo, everything, pretty much everything just turns out great. There is even a neat lens blur feature which even works with the single camera. You just have to tilt your phone just a bit and you can adjust the focus and give the bouquet effect or refocus them even after you took the photo. And for all the amazing photos that you have taken, Google is providing you with the unlimited photo storage. If you're more of a selfie person, you can quickly twist the phone twice to switch the camera to the front facing one, but I didn't like the quality of the photos that much. It's got a pretty dark lens at f2.4 and to make photos that much brighter, it has to slow down the shutter speed, thus giving you some shaky photos. HTC 10 has an amazing selfie camera with autofocus and OIS built in, so that comes in as a bit of a disappointment considering what his cousin is capable of but it excelled by a large margin in a very important department, the battery life. The screen on time went on at six hours to seven hours, which is very impressive at this size and this resolution. After all, this is still a very capable device with Snapdragon 821 quad-core processor, four gigs of RAM, and 32 or 120 gigabytes of storage of your choice. I didn't like the charging speed that much. Even with the bundled 18 watt charger, it required more than two hours, slightly more than two hours to fully charge the battery. But considering what you're getting with the charging time, I think we can all deal with that. Of course, as usual, there are some of my personal minor complaints like the lack of micro SD expansion, and of course the lack of dual SIM functionality, but Google has never included any of them in any of their reference phones like Nexus's or with Pixel with a little exception of Nexus One. I think we can all deal with it by now. Overall, as a verdict, if you ask me, I actually like the Pixel XL a lot. Of course, I like the smaller one better, but if you're a big phone guy, there's a very good chance that you will like the sturdy, well-built phone. It's a solid performer, guaranteed updates, amazing camera, okay speaker, and definitely a great start for Google to build their own phones. But again, as I mentioned from the beginning, there are issues more than one that are clearly not negligible. And the introductory price of 769 or 869 if you choose the 120 gigs one sounds absurd. This again is a phone with a higher quality than usual, but does it justify that pricing? Not entirely sure about that. So in short, nice job Google for your first phone. I'm counting a lot on the next one, Pixel 2, if that's what it's gonna be called. And if you can get a Pixel XL without any issue at a right pricing, you will like this phone. This is clearly one of the better built phones. So that was our quick review. Thank you always for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment. And you can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Thank you always, we'll see you guys later. Ciao.